I've done my best to group all of the keybinds by which of them is most useful. And by most useful, I mean which of them is easiest to hit while moving, because that's what determines how good a keybind is. Your goal with keybinds is to make sure you are always able to outmaneuver your opponent, be that by kiting effectively on Hunter, or constantly getting behind your target on a Rogue or Warrior so you can't be parried. Now, you accomplish this by having keybinds that allow you to have your hands on the movement keys as much as possible. So, obviously, you want to put your most important abilities on keys that are closest to your hand. Now, when it comes to modifiers, you should only be using shift at first. Using shift as a modifier allows you to effectively double the amount of keybinds that you have. Instead of just having 1 through 4, you now have shift 1 through 4. Now, don't get me wrong, Control and Alt are great, but they're hard to get used to, so start with just using Shift. I've been playing since Burning Crusade and I still only barely use Control, even in arenas. Now I cannot stress this one enough guys, the best keybinds at your disposal are not on your keyboard at all, they are mouse button 5 and mouse button 4. They're the easiest buttons to hit while moving. Now this actually includes shift mouse button 5 and shift mouse button 4, because these also don't interrupt your movement. I place my most spammed instant cast abilities like Sinister Strike, Mortal Strike, or Fire Blast on my mouse buttons. The only time you're going to see me break from that is when the ability has a cast time, like Frostbolt. You're never going to need to press a movement key at the same time as pressing Frostbolt. Now following this, the next best keybinds are going to be scroll wheel up, scroll wheel down, and again, the shift modified versions. And you've probably guessed why, it's because it's easy to use them while moving. This is really what opens up the amount of keybinds that you have. The one problem with the mouse wheel though, is if you put an ability on it that you're going to spam, like Sinister Strike, you can give yourself Carpal Tunnel Syndrome very, very quickly. <laughs> it's an excellent place though for openers, movement, or setup abilities, like Hunter's Mark, Blink, Cheap Shot, or even Gouge. Try to think of abilities that you need to cast while moving, but you're not going to hit them very often. That's what you want to put on the mouse wheel. Now, using something like shift scroll wheel down for gouge might sound a little crazy at first, but give it a try, seriously. It's way easier to use it while moving than you would initially think. All right, now we're moving on to the actual keyboard. These are buttons that are still very easy to hit while moving and are great for instant cast abilities that don't fit on your mouse. But while these are the best keybinds located on your actual keyboard, they don't even come close to being as useful as your mouse buttons. Now after this, I think that 2, 3, 4, and S are still easy to hit, great for abilities with a low cooldown, think 30 seconds. Uh, this is going to mean stuff like finishers, interrupts, or CC abilities. Now 2 in particular is very good for abilities with a cast time, because normally the problem with 2 is that while it's really easy to hit, you can't press W and 2 at the same time to run forward. This is because they both use the same finger, but this isn't a problem when the ability that you put there has a cast time. After that, it's going to be G1, X, and Z. Still easy to hit these, but they're a bit farther away, so this is a good place for abilities with a longer cooldown. For example, I always place my Ice Block or Bubble on Shift G. It might seem weird to have one this far down on the list, but Really, it isn't nearly as good of a keybind as those in the tiers above it. Shift 1 in particular can be very clunky to hit, so I tend to put my least important offensive cooldown on Shift 1. This is the last tier of what I consider to be usable keybinds. These are good for spells you almost never use, but you still need a keybind for them for that one time you're going to use them. Spells like Scare Beast, Expose Armor, or Potions and Bandages are really good here. Some people like to move over to the keys ESDF instead of WASD. This way they get access to more keys, but I'm not the biggest fan of this setup because it makes it way harder to hit the shift modifier, which you are going to be using a lot, so I don't recommend it. If you're using this guide with retail in mind, and you're wondering what should you be using in arenas, a common setup would be one like this. You use Q, W, and E for movement and strafing, and that leaves you free to assign A, S, and D to targeting arena 1 through 3. This completely removes the ability to keyboard turn or backpedal, which are both extremely bad in high-end PvP. This also allows you to assign things like counterspell arena 1 through 3 to shift A, shift S, and shift D, since they're no longer tied to movement. It's going to give you a way faster reaction time on your interrupts, but make sure you don't assign anything to shift on the keys that you are going to use for movement, 
In this case, that would be Q, W, and E. Those need to be dedicated to only moving. All right, before you go keybinding anything, you need to organize your spells on your bars first. If you notice, I don't do what a lot of other guides recommend, where they've got 1 through 5 on their bar, and then shift 1 through 5 right above it. I know this doesn't look as pretty, but there is a good reason for it. You want to keep things close together based on what they actually do. For example, all of my offensive abilities go right here, and my defensives go over here. This way, whenever I'm about to die, I can look in one spot and immediately see all of my options. In general, I try to keep offensive abilities in front of my hand, defensives to the right of my hand, and setup abilities below my hand. This is just what makes the most sense to my brain. You don't have to use this, but it is a pretty good setup. You've probably also noticed that I don't use Q and E. That's because I use them for movement. Look, I, I need to be able to keyboard turn when I'm playing with one handle, right? I, I mean, these Doritos aren't going to eat themselves, right? <laughs> it's a really good idea, though, to try to think of each keybind as being for a specific type of ability. This is going to help a lot when you create more than one character. For example, if I keybind Scattershot to 4 on my Hunter, it's also going to be Blind on my Rogue, Sheep on my Mage, or Fear on my Warlock. Pretty simple stuff. You, you've probably heard that before. All right, let's show an actual example. This is what I use on my Rogue. You'll see that all the instants are on my mouse buttons. It's really nice having Backstab here because it makes it really easy to get behind my target. The rest of my openers, Cheap Shot and Garote, are on my mouse wheel because I'm also using them while moving, but I don't hit them that often, so it's not going to cause any problems for my hand. All of my finishers are on 1 and 2. Offensives are on R. My interrupt always goes on 3. Crowd control on 4. Defensives on F. You get the idea. If you want to keep looking, you can pause the video right here, but rogues don't have that many keybinds, so let's take a look at a class with a few more spells. Once again, all of my instants are on the mouse buttons. Mouse wheel up is Hunter's Mark, which, while it's not a stun, it's always the first thing I'm going to hit when I get into a fight. Very similar to stuns being the first thing you hit on a rogue. And instead of finishers, all of my abilities that have a cast time go on 1 and 2. Hunters don't have an interrupt, but keeping my feign death on shift 3 really helps because it can work just like an interrupt against casters. Everything else here is just about lining up abilities that function the same as the ones on my rogue. If they don't line up perfectly, I try to think of what abilities I would use in the same situation on both characters. I want to show one more example. I haven't started a mage yet, but when I do, I drink the... I mean, this is probably what it's going to look like. If you're hoping to see my setup for any of the other classes, or maybe even a class from Battle for Azeroth, just ask in the comments, I'll do my best to answer. I've played almost every class in retail. Except for Death Knights. Screw those guys. Alright, now let's get into how to actually do your keybinds. The first step is going to be unkeybinding everything that you're not going to use. There are a lot of default keybinds in WoW that are very easy to hit on accident that you need to take care of. So you're going to start by getting rid of move and steer on the middle mouse button. It's the same as hitting both the left and right mouse buttons at the same time, so it's pointless to have a keybind for it. I also recommend getting rid of numpad 0 for jump. I then unkeybind almost everything in chat, except for of course open chat on enter and push to talk. And then in action bar, I unkeybind everything that comes after 5. And yes, you unfortunately have to do this one at a time. It's really boring and tedious, I, I know, but it's worth it. I also know it feels like you might need some of these and you're wondering why are we getting rid of all of them. But trust me, you really don't want to hit these on accident. If you do want to keybind something specific in here though, such as your pet abilities or your warrior stances with the special action bar, you can do that, but often it's better to handle those with a macro instead and then place it on your bars. Now, all of the changes we're making right now are going to be the defaults for your entire account. It's really important that you don't hit character-specific key bindings until you're done with at least setting up your main character. You only want to have to do this once. All right, jump into targeting and unkeybind everything except for target nearest enemy. I might get some flack for this one, but seriously, it's very unlikely that you are going to use any of these keybinds. All that having them does is give you a chance to hit them on accident and get yourself killed. Now, a lot of arena players in retail do use target self and target party member 1 through 4. Usually, they'll bind this to something like scroll wheel and the middle mouse button. But if you're playing classic, which doesn't have any arenas, you don't need to worry about this. If you're one of those weirdos that likes to toggle your health bars on and off all the time, 
Like, seriously, I don't, well, why? You can set it to something right now, like zero. You can also set up a keybind for assist target. It's not super necessary, but that one is pretty useful. Now it's time to set up the basic keybinds that you are going to share between all of your characters. First up is going to be start auto run. Not toggle auto run, but start auto run. I like to put this on tab, but a lot of you are going to be using that for targeting, so use something convenient, like tilde, because you are going to be using this one a lot. I'd also recommend setting a keybind for sit, sheath weapon, toggle, run walk, and follow target. I like to use my now empty keybinds between 6 and 0 for most of these. Now, a lot of players at this point would recommend that you unkeybind Q and E and rekeybind strafe to A and D. Now, this is sound advice because it frees up Q and E for your abilities, but don't feel like you have to do this. Now, I hate to make a recommendation like this, but if you're going to get into World of Warcraft, you're going to need a mouse with at least two mouse buttons. You could go all out with something like the Razer Naga, which has the 12 buttons, but... Two buttons is more than enough. In fact, having more than two is probably worse because the buttons are smaller. But if that's what you like, eh, it's not going to kill you. If you don't have a mouse with extra mouse buttons, though, freeing up the keybinds Q, E, and maybe even S is very important for you in particular because otherwise you are not going to have enough keys. Also, contrary to popular belief, backpedaling is pretty useful. At least in PvE. When you're positioning mobs while tanking, they can path really weirdly if you strafe instead of backpedaling, and it's important that you never show your back to a mob that's hitting you, or you're not going to be able to parry their attacks. Backpedaling lets you guarantee that that never happens, and it's really useful on any character while leveling, at least if you're playing a class that has parry. If you really want to use S for an ability though, you can always set backpedal to a less important keybind that's further away. Kind of weird though, I, I don't know, I can't stand it. I recommend setting B to open all bags instead of just your backpack. Very convenient. Character pane, I recommend changing to something else because C is a very useful keybind. I like to use K because character starts with K. I also like to keybind O to friends pane specifically because otherwise it's going to open up to whatever tab you had opened the last time under social, which is annoying when you're in a raid, trust me. For a quick reference, this is the setup that I use for my interface. The last keybind we need to change is the one that we're going to use for zooming in and out. Mouse wheel is just way too useful, so keep it really simple here, just change these to control mouse wheel up and down instead. Alright, now you're free to set up your keybinds however you'd like in action bar and multi action bar. Hopefully by now you've got a good idea of the setup that you'd like to use. I recommend just looking at the tier list, starting at the top, and making your way down, putting your most important skills in first, testing those out, and seeing if you like them. I like to use the empty spots on my default action bar for the mouse buttons and X, and then I go into multi action bar and I use this setup whenever I start a new character. Also, make sure that you have all of your action bars showing in the settings. All right, you're pretty much ready to go, but here's a couple tips for new players. If you're completely new to keybinds, take it slow. Keybind a few spells at a time, learn how to use those, and then do a couple more. Just start with the ones on your mouse or the ones closest to your hand. You don't have to do everything all at once. If you're a clicker, first off, I'm proud of you. Acceptance is the first step. Second, don't worry about forcing yourself to stop clicking right away. Just set up a few keybinds and you'll be very surprised at just how fast you start using them instead. Because every time you go to click with your mouse, you're getting a visual reminder that you could have just hit the keybind instead. Choosing where to put your keybinds is a balance between what spells do I hit most often and what spells do I need to hit as quickly as possible. A good example, I don't recommend putting ice block on a button that's super far away just because you don't hit it very often. Put very important long cooldown spells on a shift modifier. This makes it so you're far less likely to waste them on accident. I have preparation on shift V for my rogue, even though I have nothing important keybound to V, just because I kept hitting it on accident. For all the rules I'm giving you about keybinds, I break almost all of them myself. If you've got a keybind that you really like and you're super used to it, just keep it. If it makes sense to you, that is all that matters. If you absolutely need more keybinds, dip into using control or even alt as a modifier as well. 
They're a bit awkward to hit while moving, but they can be very nice for things that you're going to hit while standing still. I would start with Control R, Control F, or maybe Alt 1, Alt 2, and Alt 3. You can experiment yourself and see which key combinations are the easiest to hit without needing to move your hand, but those are a very good place to start. You can also keybind spacebar to use an ability as well if you're truly desperate. Alright guys, I hope this video was useful to you. It took me a stupid long time to make it, and I can't believe you made it all the way through. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe guys, and if you'd like to support me and the content I make, you can do that on Patreon. I'm working on more videos right now, and I really appreciate everyone that has supported me these last couple months. Oh, and I'm working on warrior macros.